What's up, guys? This is Ty Zan. I got LeonFu.com on the line, the great oracle of cryptocurrency here. Uh, where are you broadcasting from today, uh, Leon? Uh, I'm in Austin. Okay, you said Austin? I usually am. Okay. I'm still in Austin, yes. Okay, I'm broadcasting from uh, Columbia, South Carolina. I'm visiting some family here. So, um, mm. so you know that the um, – uh, we all know that the Dow, uh, hub org just got hacked and the ethers were stolen from it. But before uh, we get your uh, input on it, right, um, I think it would benefit the audience to understand the difference between a soft fork and a hard fork because these are some of the tools or some of the solutions that the Ethereum community is proposing to uh, fix the problem. Okay, so before we go into what you and I think about it, uh, them doing uh, the, their solution, could you explain the difference between a soft fork and a hard fork when it comes to software yeah. upgrades? Yeah, sure. So, um, you know, the, the, the reason uh, we're explaining this is because that's, uh, this is the, the, the soft fork and the hard fork are right now the, the solutions the Ethereum team is uh, proposing to get the ethers back from this uh, hack. Um, from the DAO, and so uh, to explain this, like a soft fork is an upgrade to the software uh, that is, you can think of it as backward compatible with previous versions of that software, right? So if you, if we, if the Ethereum developers put out a soft fork, um, if I upgrade, I can still work, and if I upgrade uh, and you don't upgrade, I can still interact with you. It's backward compatible, right? Like, you're, even though you didn't upgrade, your version of the software will still recognize everything from my version if I upgraded, right? That's a soft fork. And that's backward compatible because um, you don't have to upgrade. That's why it's called soft because you don't need to, uh, you don't need to, um, you don't have to upgrade and you can still work with, the people who did upgrade, all right? Okay. So, so, oh, so, so would it be safe to say that a soft fork in the world of cryptocurrency is just an optional upgrade? Yes, it's an optional upgrade where you don't have to, you can still work. Now, it doesn't mean that if you, if you don't upgrade, you can still do everything. Um, it just means it's backward compatible. You might not see features, right? Maybe... Uh, maybe uh, uh, the new version has some features in it, right? That it does something special, and you still won't be able to do it. But you can still, from your perspective, if you did an upgrade, nothing had has changed. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. So for for example, like um, when uh, Microsoft Office comes out, and they have like for example, like Microsoft Office 2013, and I'm still yeah. using uh, Office 2007. The 2013 can read the 2007 version of the documents made in 2007, but the 2007 yeah. version will not be able to read the documents that are made in the uh, well, no, 2013. No, no. 2007, no, no. The 2007, if you save something in 2013, yeah. the 2007 version should still be able to read it. <laughs> okay. So would that be the Although, equivalent of, of a, it? May, it may not have features, right? It may yeah. maybe the 2013 will have uh, put in extra things. Maybe it has, I don't know, whatever Microsoft Office has, whatever new features they put in. Yeah. They might still, the 2007 can read it, but it might still not see those features. So for, so for example, like the 2013 has a feature to, for, I'm just making this up, okay? I don't know if it has okay. it, but let's just say they have a feature in 2000. Uh, in Word 2013 that allows you to put a video inside a Word document. And you can yeah. watch that video while you're reading the document. So basically you're telling me that in 2000, the 2007 version, it will still open the document. You can still see the text and everything. You just won't be able to watch the video. Yeah, yeah. but from uh, the 2007 version, you are never able to watch the video, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so that okay. Would, would that be the equivalent of a soft fork? Yes, that's a pretty good analogy as a soft okay. fork. Right. Okay. So that that you are creating files that it is backward compatible. Uh, from your perspective, uh, it still works. Right. Okay. So it doesn't have it, it doesn't have features, but it never had those features to begin with. <laughs> right. Okay. So what is a hard 
fork. Okay, a hard fork is is uh, is, 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 is if you can imagine it's the opposite of a soft fork, right? It means that uh, you must upgrade. In other words, if you upgrade and I don't, I don't see what you see. Like it just doesn't work anymore. In, in the blockchain cryptocurrency means is we're on a different chain now. Does that make sense? Like my version, I only see transactions or I only recognize the chain from other people who haven't upgraded. And since you upgraded, your version of reality is that you only see, uh, you only can interact with users that have upgraded. Does that make sense? Like oh, your version of reality, your version of the blockchain, and my version of the blockchain are now completely different. Yeah. They're on a different chain. Yeah, so we're just basically it's, it's, reading a different ledger. Yeah, we're now on a different ledger. Yeah, from that point where we hard fork, right? We agree on everything up to that point, right? Yeah. And then, and then we're now on a different ledger. So I don't see anything you see, and you don't see it. We're basically, it's two separate coins now. Yes. Uh, matter of fact, this happened to me when uh, I invested into the NXT. They yeah, NXT every, has hard fork. Yeah. Yeah, every time they release NXT, a new software update, uh, they would uh, have a hard fork. They would hard fork it, yeah. yeah. And, and that's very contentious because hard forks are very disruptive because you split the network, right, between yeah. the people who did upgrade and the people who didn't upgrade, right? Yeah. And so, so that's so, why they are done very carefully, especially when you get to the size of Bitcoin and even Ethereum. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, now Bitcoin. You know the block, we, we know about the block size debate, right? Where we want to upgrade from one megabyte to two megabytes. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, that's going to be a hard fork. That would be a hard fork because the old software doesn't recognize anything bigger than one megabyte, right? Yeah. Only only the new software would do that. So if you don't up if if and that's why it's been so contentious. That's why we've been having this debate about increasing the block size for the past over a year now, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, because the network has grown so large and there's so many users uh, uh, that it's very difficult to get consensus to get everybody to upgrade at the same time. Yeah. Right? So, so uh, I'm going to share this example with the audience here, right? So yeah. when I first invested into the NXT uh, cryptocurrency, I remember. Let's. I don't remember the exact number, but let's just say I bought uh, twenty thousand NXT, and then a week later, I bought another ten thousand NXT. So I should have a total of thirty thousand NXT in my NXT wallet. And in between that week, they had a software update, and I needed to update it. And I was not aware at that time that I that mm -hmm. it was a hard uh, fork. I needed to do a hard fork update. I, it was mandatory that I updated it to the new software. So when I logged into my old software to the old version, it only showed that I had 20,000 NXT instead of 30,000. That's right. And I kept freaking right. out. Like, where's the other 10,000? Did it get stolen? Did it get lost? No, and no, it didn't get stolen. You were just looking at a different ledger. Exactly. And your ledger, the old version, is a different ledger. Yeah. It never got put onto that ledger. Yeah. Yeah, and I spent hours online trying to figure out how I lost the 10,000 NXT and then somebody said, did you update the, to the new software that just came out yesterday? And I'm like, um, no. And they said, update it. So I updated it, and then it showed up in my account. That's right. That's right. That's so, hard. That, that, you just, that example, that's an example of a hard fork that you just saw. And NXT had them all the time. And, yeah. And uh, Bitcoin also had it all the time. Like in the early days, Bitcoin also hard forked all the time, you know? Yes, and if, and you, if you watch the uh, video. Ethereum is, yeah. Mm -hmm. if, if you watch the video by James D'Angelo uh, uh, from the World Bitcoin Network, um, he did a talk at the uh, at the uh, MIT uh, at the uh, MIT University, and he did a talk there where he described that uh, Satoshi Nakamoto, the inventor of Bitcoin himself, did multiple hard forks and and did multiple 51% attacks on his own network in the beginning. In the beginning, so he could update the software because he could not wait for the consensus of the majority consensus to update it. Mm -hmm. So he did a really good video mm -hmm. on that. So if you guys want to hear more about it, just uh, I'll put the link in the description. That way it'll be easy. All right, all right. Anyway, okay. So um, going back to Ethereum, um, uh, Ethereum just hard forked from um, 
from Frontier to Homestead, right? That yeah. was a hard fork, right? Because I think they one they made a lot of changes, but like I, I, I the change I noticed, the immediate change you noticed was the block times were reduced from like 18 seconds to 12 seconds or something like that, right? Um, so Ethereum is going to have uh, probably more hard forks, right? Um, because we have two more releases that are on the roadmap, right? Metropolis is coming up next, and there's one after that. I, I don't remember, remember the name, but um, Ethereum is still very early, so um, we can expect uh, more uh, of these hard forks. Now, hey, I want to explain something to the audience here that they may not be aware of. <clears throat> and uh, this is something that I was not aware of, too, in the beginning when I was just getting, when you and I first got into cryptocurrencies. Whenever I have an Ethereum wallet, it's, I've, sometimes I forgot that there's other people like the, Bitcoin, the, the, the Ethereum miners, they have their wallet. And then you've got the vendors who use Bitcoin or Ethereum, whatever. And then there's individual users and then there's uh, app developers using it. And there's people writing smart contracts that's using it. So the, the problem with the hard fork is getting all these users from different arenas and different sectors to agree, or at least a majority to agree, to do a hard fork, to, to update. Because if they push yeah. out, if the Ethereum, if Vitalik and his team push out an update that requires a hard fork, but the majority of the users that I just named do not update, then it's just useless. Mm -hmm. Nobody, then nothing changes. Exactly. And, and the way this is done, usually the way uh, hard forks are done is they're done in the future. Right, so they would just say that okay, we're gonna we're, we're gonna have this new version of the software, right, and we're gonna hard fork on a specific block in the future, right. So, um, if let's say we're right now on block fifty thousand, right. Okay. Um, then and we update the software, and the, the the software is called the new rules don't take effect until block say one hundred, right, and that gives everybody time to upgrade. Does that make sense? Yeah, like the new software is still doing the old thing up until a certain block. So they said that it's mandatory upgrade in two weeks in the future, so, so that the word gets out, right? Yeah. So there's plenty of time for everybody to prepare for the upgrade. Yeah, uh, uh, upgrade. So that's how it's um, Bitcoin. It doesn't matter. You, you, NXT did this, this too, where they say, all right, this is a mandatory upgrade, and it's happening on this block, which could be usually it's a, at least. It could be a week, a two weeks, three weeks, a month, you know, yeah. uh, in the future, right? Uh, and then at that point, it forks, right? It's, yeah. It's a hard, it's, it's a hard fork. As what I mean, it means that we're making a. It's like uh, you know the chain. The road is going to turn right, and uh, you have to turn right with everybody else. If you don't, you're off on your own, <laughs> right? Okay, so uh, that will conclude this uh, video on. Um, what is the difference between a soft fork versus a hard fork when it comes to upgrading uh, your cryptocurrency software? Uh, thanks for watching this video, guys, and listen to us. If you guys like it, give us a thumbs up. If you guys don't like it, give us a thumbs down so we'll know not to waste time making it. And uh, if you have any friends or family that are interested in investing in cryptocurrencies, uh, make sure that you share their, uh, our channel with them so that leonfood.com and I can... Uh, help them uh, learn more about investing in cryptocurrencies, okay? So thanks for watching this video, and we'll see you guys in a future video.